Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Attell. Today I'm back with another video where I'm reviewing some more speakers from OSD. So I just recently got this Nero Stream XD, which I think would be perfect to pair with these speakers. This is a class D amplifier rated at 60 watts per channel into four ohms. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capability up to 192 kilohertz and 24 bit. And that's important if you're trying to use a lossless streaming service like a lot of the new ones now. And using the subwoofer output, you can match this up with something that their SS8 Slim DSP subwoofer that I reviewed previously. I plan on covering this amp more in future reviews. Overall, that's not a very expensive system, but you'll get good overall sound with small speakers, a slim subwoofer, and a capable amp. One thing I need to mention is OSD is a channel sponsor. They sent these out free for me to review. That doesn't affect my opinion. I'm allowed to say whatever I want. Now, I know some people have said, hey, you have to listen to the speakers. You know, all you guys do is measure these speakers. You never listen to them. Well, let me do this. I'm gonna unbox them and I'm gonna listen to them, make some notes. I won't measure them till the very end and we'll see how they compare to what I heard. All right, so first up is this Nero Mod Q3. But very quickly, let's take a look at the specs. It says LCR speaker, dual three inch fiberglass cone, one inch silk dome tweeter, 60 watts RMS power handling, frequency response 100 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's not very low. Sensitivity 85 dB, not very sensitive. Impedance eight ohms, and then dimensions 11.25 by 4.76, by 4.84 inches. All right, so here's what I know for sure. You're not gonna expect a lot of bass with these. The specs say it right on the box. They're probably very small. And so hopefully they're flat. That's what I'm hoping for because it says monitor speaker. We'll have to see how it goes. Oh, these are tiny. No wonder they don't have a lot of bass. Look at this thing. Feels solid though. Kind of cool looking too. So small speakers, very small speakers. You see the OSD black logo right there, uh, metal grill, the tweeter, and the two three inch woofers. On the back, you see a bracket. This is all metal, by the way, and a place to mount these as well as a, what is that? Quarter 20 threading, my guess. And a five way binding post. These are very small, so make sure that the gauge wire you use will fit that, but um, overall, feels like some MDF or something like that. There you have it. One thing I also wanna say is that this is a sealed enclosure, which is not typical nowadays. More and more you see ported enclosures, and I think that's helpful to help flatten the frequency response because a lot of times the ports cause some issues. So there's that. There's two of these. In this box is the Mod Q2 monitor speakers and these say three inch fiberglass cone, one inch silk dome tweeter, 50 watts RMS, power handling, frequency response 101 hertz to 20 kilohertz and 85 decibels, eight ohms. All right, here are the Q2s. Open these up. Instruction manual. Wow, these are small. All right, so there's one. There's another. I'm not sure what they mean by modular still. Wow, there's some cuties, huh? There you go. There's the back, Mod Q2. I just don't understand how they're modular yet. All right, I'm here on their website and I see that they have them actually stacked vertically, like kind of like a line array or something like that. I don't know. All right, another thing I noticed here is that on Outdoor Speaker Depot OSD, so you save $89 and they're $129 a pair. All right, so something quick to notice is that these banana plugs are actually too small. So yeah, that won't fit up there. You can kind of like make them work here, but just keep that in mind. All right, because these are so small, I'm assuming that most people are gonna use this mostly at a desk or if you have a small home feeder set up and some subs. So let's see how they sound here near field see how it goes so another thing i should say is that i have these connected to a basic class d amp the smsl sa 300 something you'd probably pair these up to as far as price and size so i don't see somebody going and 
spending thousands of dollars on an amplifier to hook them up to these speakers just doesn't seem realistic. So I think this is a good match. All right, so first impression of these is they sound pretty good. I mean, what can I say? Oh, I just noticed the texture on this. Um, let me see, it's, it's always easier to say what they don't do well rather than what they do do well because you kind of expect it to do what it's supposed to do, right? So let me just, let me try it. Let me try to say something good about it first. The mid-range, I don't hear anything that's distracting. It sounds, I don't wanna say accurate because I do find that the treble is a little bit bright, but some people might like that. Of course, with these little speakers, sealed three inch woofer, you're not gonna get a lot of bass, which I already expected. But uh, the bass does roll off smoothly because it is not ported, meaning that it doesn't try too hard, right? It stops where it can't handle any more bass and it doesn't try to produce any more bass. So it's a little bit more controlled in that aspect. But um, I don't see anything that would stop me from enjoying these speakers and enjoying the music that I'm listening to. Nothing there that would distract me like, you know what, I, I just can't listen to those. So that's what happens a lot of times with some TV speakers. I just, uh, I can't hear it. There's just so much distortion, uh. But not with these. So far, I've, I think what I'm gonna find in the measurement is I'm gonna find that the treble is a little bit uh, boosted and the bass is not gonna be there. But what I'm hoping to find and what I'm expecting to find is that the mid-range is gonna be Pretty flat, I think. The other thing about these smaller speakers is because they're so small, they tend to disappear, I think is what a lot of people like to say, meaning that they don't draw so much attention to themselves. I don't know how else to explain it, but I think that does have to do with the smaller speakers because I've found that other speakers that are wider, they don't do that as well. So. Maybe something to do with uh, the property of the speaker. One thing I can say is compared to TV speakers that I've heard, these are a million times better. I haven't heard TV speakers that sounded this good. And if they did, I would be amazed. So yeah, just to put that into perspective as far as how these sound, I get to review all kinds of other speakers. And so you can imagine that compared to some of the bigger ones, these don't perform as well. But you have to maintain a proper realistic perspective. So the next thing I want to do before I start measuring these is I want to test out the Mod Q3, which is an MTM design. So two woofers with a tweeter in the middle and see how that compares to these. All right, so check this out. Something I gave SVS huge props for on their elevation speakers is that the logo rotated and so does the one here on this OSD. There you go. So if you have it this way, you can have it facing properly. If you want to use it as a center channel, you just turn it. There it is. Very nice touch. I like that. So before I get started listening to these speakers, one thing I do want to say about the other ones is that low sensitivity, you could really tell because I had to crank up the app higher than I usually do with more sensitive speakers. So something to keep in mind, if you don't have a amplifier with a lot of power, you may not want to use these speakers unless you plan on not listening to them too loud. So keep that in mind, low sensitivity speaker, you're going to have to have a more powerful app or you have to set your expectations to not be able to listen to speakers at very loud volumes without any distortion. Now I'm in a pretty large garage and so I'm cranking these up pretty high, but keep in mind I'm also sitting relatively close to them. As far as room filling sound, it's not gonna be uh, suitable for a big party or anything like that. If your expectations are realistic and you just wanna have some nice even sound, if you plan on adding some subs, I think that this will all kind of work out. Right, so after listening to the Mod Q3s, uh, certain things that you would expect. So they do play a little bit louder. You can tell a tiny bit more bass, a little bit more bass, not much. But uh, the other thing is, it seems to me just by listening 
that the treble on these seems higher than the Q2, which is not what I would expect because you would think that, you know, the two woofers would make it so that at least they're gonna be equal or less. But I think the way they tune this, somehow the treble seems brighter to me on these. We'll have to see if I'm wrong in the measurements, but that's what I'm kind of experiencing, almost to the point where uh, I don't like that much treble. And so I'm testing out songs that do accentuate that and I'm noticing it on these. Uh, one of the good things about the MTM design though is I'm noticing kind of a more precise uh, imaging, right? So when I'm moving left and right, I am noticing that the center stage and the placement is a little bit more accurate, kind of something you expect from an MTM. By MTM, I mean mid-range, tweeter mid-range for those who don't know. All right, so here we are, time to do some measurements. We'll be right back. All right, so a few things I find interesting, I'm looking at the measurements here, is that uh, I'm looking at the Mod Q3 versus the Mod Q2 within the listening window, and right here in the 1.5 kilohertz region, there is a spike in the Mod Q3 that isn't in the Q2, and other than that, the rest is pretty much the same, but the problem is the 1.5 kilohertz region is where our ears are very sensitive, and so that's why I was noticing a little bit of harshness because of that extra peak there that wasn't there on the Mod Q2. Now, when you have them both standing vertically, neither are good vertically off axis, as you can see here. That's how the Mod Q3 performs, and you get this crazy dip here. And that's why if you're planning on using this as a center channel where you plan on maybe moving up or down or you know relaxing in the seat, you may want to use that horizontally because instead of getting this response here, you will get a response like that, which is much more similar to the on-axis response. So the Mod Q2, and here it is 45 degrees off axis, and so you can see that it is a little bit more tame in the treble region, 45 degrees above is not, for some reason, it's not as bad as what I saw with the Mod Q3. You do see a little bit of a, a dip here in this region and the treble is rolled off, but 45 degrees below is actually where I find is the best, in my opinion, this is the best possible response for the speaker. And I think that this might be appropriate with some DSP. You might be able to get a little bit better sound out of these. And of course, with a sub, because these are rolling off pretty crazy under 100 hertz, so you're gonna want a subwoofer to fill out this region here. But for a desktop, I think that the Mod Q2 is actually the way to go. If it were me, I would actually prefer to just have Mod Q2s all around. Now, if that Mod Q2 won't fit under your TV because, you know, sometimes the TVs are pretty thin under there, then I can understand why you'd want a Mod Q3 horizontally instead. You can use your AVR to balance them out and have them sound more tonally correct and fix some of these issues here. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but these are also inexpensive speakers. But overall, I would say, yeah, you know, for the price, I'd have to go back to my database to try to figure out speakers that are better than these, which is what we'll do on speaker leaderboard. All right, so I'm actually not gonna put the Mod Q3 because that's more of a center channel. And just know that it measures about the same as the Q2, but a little bit worse. So best bookshelf, I'm gonna put them right here between the IKEA Symphonisk, Symphonisk and the BenQ Travolo 2. The BenQ was actually much more expensive. I think it was like a couple hundred bucks each. For best under $200, these come at $129 a pair. I'm gonna have to put it again right here near the IKEA Symphonisk. The Ikea is actually a Sonos speaker, so it had a little bit more functionality, uh, and I thought that that was a pretty good price. It has some pretty good decent bass because of DSP. So finally, best overall sound, regardless of price, I'm gonna, again, put them right here between the Ikea Symphonisk and the BenQ Travolo 2. You guys know that I like bass. These don't have a ton because they're tiny, but again, with a sub, it kind of changes the whole dynamic. The Mod Q2 and Q3s, I think I'd rather have a bunch of these Q2s myself personally. The other thing is the build quality for the price. I think that these are very well suited for being placed on the wall just because of the mounting solutions on the back here, the quarter 20 thread. You have a lot of options to mount this easily. I think if I was back in my high school days and I had a bunch of these and a subwoofer, I would be extremely happy to have this in a home theater setup. But yeah, there you go. 
If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.